Hi, in this video we'll be looking at how to create filter criteria that drives worksheets. You can see here I have a parameterized worksheet with periods and a count type. And then I have a balance for two companies. On the other worksheets I have tables for each company. The idea is that on the main filter worksheet we can change the periods and have those other worksheets recalculated. For example, if I change the period to the 12th period and click on the update button, the contents of these sheets are updated. Sharplight is designed to only update tables if they have cell references on the active worksheet. But when you parameterize tables and centralize their parameters onto another worksheet, what is required is something like a button to kick off those calculations. That way we can change, for example, the period from and to and the account type without having those tables recalculate each time we change a value. The same thing can be achieved without a button by simply selecting the recalculate worksheet from the right click menu. But it's much better to allow the user to change the values and then click the update button. Let's have a look how this workbook has been created by putting it from scratch. First of all, let's go to the filter sheet and start typing in the period from and period to sections. And in these cells here, we're going to put in the periods. I'm using a test database over SAP Business once. I just need to put in a period in the past. And you can see here is my from and to. When we're referencing from the tables later on, it's best to reference by name ranges. So I'm going to come up here and type in period from and hit enter and period to. And in this cell here, I'll set up a account type and I'll put in a valid account type. Later on, we'll pull out the totals from the tables that we create on the other sheets. Now I'm going to move to the second sheet and I'll rename this to be the UK and I need to choose a spot where the table will appear. I'll select table and you can see that I've set the report mode to summary report then I can select the product. In this case I'm using SAP Business 1 and next I can choose the company. I'd like to start this process on the UK company so I'm just going to copy that from the selection and put it up into this cell here and the reason why is because I'd like each sheet to have a different company so I'm going to go up to the company and now reference the cell B2. Next I'll choose the table which will be GL transactions and now I can start building my query so I'm going to have the account code and I'll come into chart of accounts and pull out the account name and I would like to also parameterize the account types, so I'll pull those up into the filters. And finally, I'll bring out the amount. Change this description to account name. Here's the point where we set the filters to point to the filter sheet on sheet one. So I'm going to select sheet one and come to the periods and I'm going to set that to the from and that to the to period. You can see because we gave them name ranges it's easier to understand the cell, cell references. I'll do the same for the account type. You can see that this still says sheet D7 so I'll just come back up over here and finish the name range for the account type. Hit enter and I'll click on the account type again and you can see now it's picked up a better name for the cell reference. Let's come back to the active worksheet, which is the UK, which is a very important step because now we're going to click OK. You can see that the table has been populated with the criteria based on the company that's up the top here, which I can also change if I want to, and the main sheet. Let's now take this table and repeat the process for the next sheet. So I'm going to sheet number three and I'll rename this to AU for Australia 
and to kick the process off I just need a valid company in cell B2 to start the process. So I'm going to use the UK office to start with. Now we can come into Query Manager. You can see that we have our query listed under the new workbook. Let's open that up and drag it out onto the workbook and close this. Now all we need to do is adjust the company. So I'm just going to double click on that and you can see that it's referencing B2 and the main sheet again. We can now set that back to Australia and then adjust the columns. Let's return to the main filter sheet and place the totals for each company. So I'm going to enter in total UK and total AU. And in here we'll reference the total from the bottom of those tables. Type in equals and we'll go to the UK office and we can click on the total and AU. Come to the AU worksheet and we can click on the total for the AU office. Now we'd like to create a button that updates all the worksheets if we change these values. Currently if I change this value here you can see that these totals aren't moving. That's because unless it's the active worksheet this table is not going to update. Currently I still can refresh the whole workbook by doing a right click recalculate workbook and you can see these values have changed but I'd much prefer to create this button. Create a button you'll need the developer ribbon up the top here. If you don't have it you can come into files options come into customize ribbon and from the choose command from select all tabs and then from the list find the developer section. Okay, I'm going to place the button here, so I'll come up to the insert, select, and select the region. You can see that it's prompted me for the macro name. For the macro name, we need to type in MD Recalculate Active Workbook. This is a sharper light macro name that will automatically recalculate all the worksheets. Next, we can rename the button to update. And now the button's ready for use. If I click on this, you can see that the worksheet's flashed. If each worksheet was taking quite some time, it would step for each one so you could see the progress overall. Let's change the values now to just 2007001 001 and update the worksheets. To see a list of all the possible macro options that Shopalite provides, go into File Options and select the customized ribbon and from the list select macros. All the Shopalite macros start with MD. In this case because we've assigned a Shopalite macro to the button we don't need to enable macros in the workbook. There are also other videos that discuss the topic of button binding for particular tables. But in this example we've looked at calculating all the sheets in a workbook based on a single button.